This is a course on software engineering and uh, this is based on the book Fundamentals of Software Engineering by Rajiv Mal, Dr. Rajiv Mal and he is eminent famous person, a professor from IT Kalapur and he has done a great work in this field and his book is world renowned. Most of uh, colleges and universities in India, they follow this book and we will be concentrating upon his uh, content and we will be covering these uh, PPT, again this PPT uh, sources from Dr. Rajimal only. So what we are going to do is to cover the various chapters and then try to answer or give you a hint about the questions of each chapter. So organization of this particular um, session is what is software engineering, difference between programs and software products because this is often asked what is the difference between a program and a software. Then uh, some you know discussion on evolution of software engineering, then notable changes in you know from the earlier times to now till now software development practices and then introduction to life cycle models followed by summary. This is an often asked question what is software engineering? So we have various uh, definitions on this and as we move on the innovations and past experiences towards writing good quality programs cost effectively have contributed to the emergence of software engineering as a discipline as a discipline as a separate field so software engineering is an engineering approach to develop software like building uh, construction analogy like if we try to um, build you know construct a building so there are certain steps involved there is a there is a whole engineering behind it software engineering is like that only it is an engineering approach to develop softwares and you can also say that it is a systematic collection of past experiences, techniques, methodologies and guidelines. So software engineering discusses system, systematic and cost effective techniques uh, for software development and these techniques help develop software using an engineering approach. What about uh, engineering practice? You know, we have heavy use of uh, this past experience, what people have done. And this past experience is then systematically arranged. And then also theoretical basis and quantitative techniques, they are already there, they are developing. And some of them, they are just thumb rules, but we have different alternatives also, possibilities also. So there has to be a trade-off between these alternatives. And also, as I just suggested, it is a pragmatic approach to cost effectiveness. We want our software to be built in time, before schedule, and also, it should be cost beneficial. Like in this uh, particular example or uh, this chart, this is actually an evolution of technology with time chart. This is technology and uh, this is time. So we have art, then it became this software engineering was an art. In this case, it shows uh, a uh, growth which is historic past, exp past experience. Then this is organized use of past experience. Then it became craft, this patio you see is craft and then it again increased with time gradually which shows systematic use of past experiences also in addition with scientific basis and now we are in the times where we call it as engineering. So in a build and fix time, a program is quickly developed without making any specification plan or design. So the different imperfections that are subsequently noticed they are fixed. This was previous approach and now we have come to this approach. So why we should study software engineering? This is an often asked question also. First of all, to acquire skills so that we, we are able to develop large programs and the complexity has increased exponentially. Yes, it has grown and as the size, as the requirements have increased, the difficulty level has also emancipated. So that ad hoc approach breaks down when the size of software increases. The ad hoc approach which we just saw here. These approaches, they do not work. So one thorn of experiences is worth a whole wilderness of warning. I hope uh, you understand what I am trying to speak. Then not only this, uh, are the software products becoming progressively more expensive than hardware, 
But they also present a host of other problems to the customers like software products are uh, difficult to alter, debug and enhance and use resources non-optimally. They often fail to meet the user requirement as far from being reliable, frequently crash and are often delivered late. So why, was, why do we study? Because ability to solve complex programming problems and how to break large projects into smaller and then erstwhile manage well. And as I just suggested, you need to know the techniques of making, creating specification, design, interface development, testing, project management, and so on and so forth. Then to acquire skills to be a better programmer, software person. You can produce higher, and then also the quality of the programs would be better. Then we come to software crisis. What is software crisis? Because Software present, what is the crisis? The word is uh, quite hard and harsh. Software products, they often fail to meet user requirements. They crash, they are expensive, difficult to alter, debug, and enhance, delivered late, and use resources non optimally. This is a chart or a graph. These are hardware and software cost. You can very well witness that in 1960 it was in this range. And with year, it has gone down. It has reached somewhere here. This is because of your software engineering. So there are various factors which contribute to the world called software crisis. We have larger problems. We don't have training, adequate training in software engineering. And, uh, you know, this is shorting. The skill is uh, relatively going down. And then low productivity improvements. These are all the factors which are contributing to our software crisis. Then there are uh, certain questions which need to be answered, like what is a program or a software products? So let us see them in, um, in just a few bits. Programs usually small in size while products, software products are large. Programs authorize himself or author, uh, himself authorize is to him that is, that is he's a sole user. And for software products, we may have large number of uh, users. Single developer for a program, maybe more than that, uh, we don't know. But we categorize program for single uh, developer. While team of developers are involved in, in a software product, making a software product. So programs, they lack proper user interface, while this is products are well-designed interface. Lack of documentation or no documentation in programs. While a software product should be well-documented and, you know, often... Um, this should contain the user manual, which is an important part. The ad hoc development in case of uh, programs, while there is a policy or a process of systematic development as far as software products are concerned. So these are, uh, in this way, we can categorize these two. We have computer systems engineering. What is computer systems engineering? It encompasses or, you know, it... Uh, imbibes in comp uh, the software engineering and many products they require development of software as well as uh, you know, along with them some hardware to run like a coffee vending machine say a, a mobile communication product etc so we have a high level program going up to deciding which tasks are to be solved by a software and which ones by the hardware so we have to create a specific distinction between these two so what happens hardware and software they are developed together Hardware simulator is used during our software development only. And then we integrate hardware and software. We combine them. And then we perform system, uh, system level testing on this. So as far as computer system uh, engineering is concerned, we have a feasibility study, then requirements analysis and uh, then specification, then hardware software partitioning, which gives rise to hardware development uh, in separate session and software development. Then we combine them. And then finally we perform integration and some sort of testing, which is we call as project management. So how it happened, what we are talking, how it has taken place. So early computer programming in 1950s, programs were being written in assembly language. Programs were limited to about a few hundreds of lines of assembly code. Then every programmer developed his own style of writing programs, like according to his intuition, or we call it as exploratory uh, programming. According to one's intuition is exploratory style of software development and uh, there is there are things which are wrong with exploratory uh, style of software development then came high level languages such as fortran algol cobol they were introduced 
and they reduce software development efforts you know immensely then software development style was still exploratory means typical program sizes were limited to few thousands of line of source code loc we call it then we had control flow based a uh, design in late 60s the size and complexity of program they increase further that means ex exploratory uh, programming style they were insufficient and then programmers they found well they found it very difficult to write cost effective and correct programs both of them they also found that uh, programs which are written by others were quite uh, difficult or sometimes impossible to understand and then to maintain to address this problem these programmers they advised pay particular attention to the design of the program's control structure here comes the design so programmers control structure they they were indicating the step wise or the sequence in which the program's instructions they are sought to be or expected to be executed and also to help design programs having good control structure and then something was developed we call it as flow charting technique again in uh, this this is this is all happening in late 60s using flow chart techniques so one can represent and design a program control structure now they have a proper formation some structure and one understands a program just by mentally simulating the program's execution sequence step by step and a program having a messy flow chart or um, not well organized unorganized flow chart representation they are consequently difficult to understand and debug so it was observed these go to statements make your control structure quite uh, difficult and messy go to statement alter the flow of control arbitrarily there is no control you cannot go um, in a sequence it just changes from one point to another so there was a need to restrict this go to statement and uh, it was quite recognized there so many programmers had extensively used assembly languages while they were developing earlier on so this jump instructions are frequently used for program branching in assembly languages the program consider use of go to statements they were in inevitable how to get rid of it then at these times dixta he published his article go to statement considered harmful and many programmers they were unhappy like um, today in uh, software testing there are various uh, options like uh, or you can say standard like sjf is there then these are so restrictive now programmers they they are holding their nerves and they work upon it if they want a good program they have to work on it so they published several counter articles uh, for dixta countering dixta highlighting the advantages and inevitability of go to statements they tried you know everything that could be possible but it was conclusively proved that only three programming constructs are sufficient to express any programming logic any programming construct first is your sequence then selection if else and then iteration like why for do while only three are enough you don't require these um, constructs which are making a program clumsy then everyone came to the conclusion that it is possible to solve any programming problem without using go to statements and they formed the basis of structured programming methodology here came the structured programming methodology the program is called structured why when it uses only these structure or these constructs sequence selection and iteration uh, which i just showed you so as uh, these ad, uh, the advent of structured programs unstructured control flows were uh, highly avoided and they only consist of neat set of modules only we have functions modules procedures and they use single entry and single exit program constructs so these programs which we call as structured programs violation to this structure they are permitted due to some practical considerations such as you want to premature um, exit you want to exit premature lay from a loop and you want to do some exception handling also in this case you can do it, do it then these structured programs are they are quite easy to understand read maintain and quite you know effort are uh, highly reduced along with the time for development then research experience shows programmers they commit less number of errors while using structure like if and then else and do while statements and this compared to test and branch construct also 
and then it was discovered that it is important to pay more attention and to concentrate to the design of data structure of a program and then to design of its control structure and in this this all is happening in early 70s and techniques which emphasize designing the data structure like uh, deriving program structure from it and we call them as uh, data structure oriented design techniques let us have an example like a uh, jsp that is jackson's structured programming methodology came it was developed by michael uh, jackson in 1970s not the the dancer and then data structure oriented design which we call as jsp jackson structured programming methodology the programs code structure should correspond to the data structure it became important and in this jsp methodology a program's data structure are first designed using notation for say sequence selection and iteration and then the data structure design is used to derive the program structure now several other data structure oriented methodology also also they came into existence like warnier or methodology so this all came and uh, then uh, things they move ahead and in the next session we'll be uh, completing this introduction and we'll be looking more into what happened finally making a base to our next session Thank you so much. Take care.